And now on to the main topic. I'm off my soapbox, so on to the main topic. Sugar and what it does to the body. Uh -huh. Did you know that dietary sugar intake for women and children is 24 grams daily? It's 36 grams for men. 24 grams daily. That's like, I think, six teaspoons or something like that. And then for men, it's like nine teaspoons. Just to give you an idea, Bruce Koch ginger ale. You familiar with Bruce Koch ginger ale? That's that That's fancy not. ginger ale. Okay. It's made okay. with real ginger. It's very Ooh. tasty. 22 grams of sugar. Really? 22 grams of sugar. I'll tell you, after my appointment last week, I hadn't eaten because I had to be there early and I had to park and all this other stuff. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to go on my app. I'm going to order a drink from Starbucks. I was going to order a venti white chocolate because I, I didn't have breakfast, like I said. It was just on a whim. So I decided to check on a whim. You're having a craving. craving. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a craving. I was hungry and I figured okay. I will have this okay. and then later I'll have a meal. I don't really look at calories, but I said, after I read that, I said, let me look at the sugar content. What? 68 grams of sugar. Cool. Needless to say, I didn't, I didn't place that order. I canceled the order, but I was like, God damn. Wow. 68 grams. I wonder what the Holy chocolate God. latte would have had. What would that have had? I can tell you. Let me go on the app. I'm curious to know. How does that you have, Is that your drink, the chocolate latte? No, I'm not drinking that. I'm black coffee now. I've finished with that. But I mean, when, you, I had, did. You know, when you did, because I didn't I know did. that. It was, what is it called? The black chocolate? What is it called? The dark chocolate what? White chocolate latte. I did used to have those. White chocolate lattes. That was a delicious white drink. White chocolate latte. Hold on. Let's see. White chocolate let's see mocha white chocolate cheddar oh mocha. oh my god i love mocha. Let's see latte here but let's go with uh is it iced or i used to get it iced too you can get it hot i or see iced. they have like they have mocha they have a uh, mocha frappuccino no that's yes not well. is that, that it there might be a white chocolate mocha frappuccino yes that so it's 420 calories what size do you usually get? Do you get a, a grande or do you get a I got a venti. Okay, venti. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. 76 okay. grams of sugar. Seven, six. <laughs> That's three days worth of sugar. So you can imagine, head. I have not since <laughs> touched this app to wow. buy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the New York Times did a piece on sugary drinks and colorectal cancer in young people because they're finding the link between sugary drinks. So something interesting that, um, you know, I did an interview a few weeks ago with uh, the Colon Cancer foundation's president and she yes. said something about people born after 19 around 90 1990 are twice as likely to have colon cancer so they said compared with people born around 1950 those born around 1990 have twice the risk for colon cancer and four times the risk for rectal cancer yikes so basically the article was about a study done in the journal gut and it examined the link between colorectal cancer and sweet drinks and they did all these nurses and they found that on average, after 24 years of follow-up, they found 109 cases of colorectal cancer, which is not huge because okay. that risk, absolute risk is not that high among that group. But for those that are at risk, um, compared with women who average less than one eight ounce serving of sugar sweetened drinks a week, those who drank two or more had more than double the relative risk for the disease. And each additional serving of sweet drinks increased that risk by 16%. A serving a day in adolescence was linked to a 32% higher risk. This was from the, the journal Gut. All Just those think about that. Drinks. 
Think of all those sports drinks. You know, my guy drinks a lot of sports drinks as a little kid. And I made a trade-off where I said, you can't, you can't have an ice cream and a sports drink. You're going to have to pick one. That's the same thing I but do with Lizzie. Drink it right down like it was nothing, like it was water. Right, because of the empty calories. And what happens is with the high fructose corn syrup, which they're kind of looking, they're, they're looking kind of specifically at oh, high uh -huh. fructose corn syrup. Okay. Um, they're not saying outright that it is high fructose corn syrup, but they're looking closely at high fructose corn syrup. Okay. Uh, and, and when they look at that, they're, they're saying that what's happening is the, um, when you drink it, it's empty calories, and then you're still feeling hungry afterwards. It doesn't satisfy you. There's right. something about that. Right. Exactly. I remember reading an article years ago, they said something about certain percentage of people who consume, have a reaction to high fructose corn syrup, that it eliminates their feeling of hunger so that you could eat, and I remember I'm definitely one of those people I could eat a massive thing that it eliminates your feeling of hunger that it it's as if it's as if you were not satiated at all so if I ate a right. huge Thanksgiving meal and then I ate a roasted marshmallow it's as right. if it did not have that Thanksgiving meal and I could just continue eating all day I'm not stuffed there was some weird procedure that I know about myself now that I get that little activation of something and mm -hmm. it's as if I didn't eat, you know, four pounds of- Oh, turkey. you know what it is? I forgot what the name of that, that, um, that is hormone is. Ghrelin, ghrelin or leptin. It might be- It's leptin. one of them, I, but I forgot what that, I read about it, but I forgot what that, that okay. process is called. But in any event, a study published in JAMA Internal Medicine 2014, the doctors found an association between a high sugar diet and greater risk of dying from heart disease. I'm just gonna spell out for you the different ways sugar is not your friend. There, this, was, this, this was done 15 years ago, by the way. Wow, okay. So the higher the intake of added sugar, yeah. the higher the risk of heart disease. They're not talking about like if you eat an apple or you eat a banana or you have a fruit smoothie with nothing added to it. We're okay. talking about like honey or sugar or, you know, agave or something like agave. that, which I don't know that people were using agave that much 15 years ago, but we're going to add it in um, because of the glycemic you know, mm -hmm. effect. So how sugar actually affects heart health is through several indirect connections. High amounts of sugar overload the liver. And okay. liver treats sugar just the way it treats alcohol. So, you know, um, and it converts dietary carbohydrates. That's another source of sugar that people don't realize, um, which leads to an accumulation of fat, which leads to fatty liver disease and is a contributor to diabetes. Remember, this marquee had died from diabetes complications. Uh, and so diabetes raises your risk um, for heart disease. Consuming too much added sugar raises your blood pressure and increases chronic inflammation. And we know that inflammation is the road to most, if not all disease, uh, sugary beverages. So the effect is fatty liver disease, heart disease. Sugar also lowers your immune system. Bacteria and viruses thrive on sugar and it's because it's their only source of energy. So consuming sweet snacks. You ever notice like if you, you're on the verge of like a cold or something like that and then you have something really sweet and then you get like, you just blow out sick yeah. because yeah. sugar lowers your immune system because it's known for stressing your adrenal glands, which controls and regulates cortisol, oh, your stress okay. hormone, and it controls okay. your blood pressure and it controls aldosterone. And your thyroid, which is like the you know the, the master horm hormone for, for them all, um, and it's you, this is the one that's responsible for for maintaining your metabolism, cognitive function, and body temperature. So eating too many sugary foods or high glycemic index foods can lead to inflammation in the body, and that also affects the skin. Sugar also ages you. Now let me tell you, I found this that's interesting. True. <laughs> yeah. So I found this interesting article, the effects of sugar on your skin. So it's a process called glycation, you know, where the sugar in your bloodstream attaches to proteins and it, okay. it, it creates free radicals called AGE, ages. Uh, and as it accumulates, it damages your collagen and elastin, 
affects the type of collagen you have because there's three types of, of collagen. And uh, I think the first collagen type one is like the least uh, desirable. Type two, type three is the strongest. Okay. Um, deactivates your natural antioxidant enzymes. And here are signs that sugar is aging your skin. The surface of your skin looks hard and shiny. You get deep cross hatch lines that appear along your lip. I thought that was from smoking. I didn't know that that was. Oh, yeah. Wow, no kidding. Wow. Discoloration and hyperpigmentation marks on your skin, deep crevices, especially around the laugh line areas, mm -hmm. and the skin around your jaw area begins to sag. <laughs> How you like them apples? <laughs> That's pretty wow. outrageous, isn't it? That's also really specific. I didn't know about the three types of collagen. That's oh, yes. Really like, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. And so you want to have the one that keeps your skin springy and, you know, and I wonder if. Because you lose because water. I want, yeah. I wonder if the reason a lot of diseases affect Black people in later, sta later stages is because outwardly we don't show those signs. Because you know how they say Black don't crack. Yes. And so you don't have the outward because we also have the melanin that protects our skin and protects the structural integrity. So we don't age the same way that okay. uh, uh, people of lighter skin colors age. And so you might not know right away that you're damaging your body. This is just a theory. I, I you know, I don't but know. Who's saying that if you're not seeing something happening, you're not as motivated to cut back on your sugar intake. If you're, if you're still looking really good, what's gonna change you? What's gonna make you change? And then with so many cosmetic procedures now to mimic beauty and mimic good health, right. it's very easy to offload. Um, you know, I actually wrote a book many years ago. Uh, I wrote a book, I forgot, book. I forgot the name of my own damn book. I, <laughs> I should have had, I'll, I'll have it for when we talk about skin next time. Very good. But you know, I wrote a book and one of the things I wrote in my book um, you, let me grab it real quick. I'll be right back. Oh. It's called Your Clearest Skin. And it, one of the things I talked about in the book was I talked about how, you know, when you have a high, you know, carbohydrate, high sugar diet, um, that it affects you, you, you get the hormonal breakout. Yes. Skin. So cutting back on the sugar, cutting back on the carbohydrates is a, is a tremendous way, is a cheap way, actually. Yeah, that you can save your skin and say to yourself, you know, trips to the dermatologist and, and trips, you know, to the spa and so on and so forth. So I thought that it was interesting that I wrote that even back then. What year did I, I remember have? that book too? I have it in my on my shelf. It was cut down on gluten, cut down on sugar. You had a lot of really good advice back then. Because those are the things that I found when I did those things. Now, yeah. mind you, I still struggle. I still struggle. I struggle with sugar. I really do. Yeah. Sugar is the hardest in my Particularly opinion. around that time of the month. Yes. That time of the month is the hardest time for me to really, you know, and I find, have you seen this show physical? It's on, it's on um, Apple TV with Rose Byrne. That show is so hilarious, but she has this internal conversation where she, she's a, she's a, um, she's a bulimic. And so she okay. does, does the binge purge and she's always, she's talking to herself and she's like, this is the last time tomorrow <laughs> I'm going to eat better. And I'm going to eat, I'm going to have a salad and I'm going to exercise. <laughs> New addict speaking. That's the conversation I'm having with myself. I'm laughing because I recognize this in myself. Yes, Not the absolutely. bulimia, but the conversation where I have right. some sugar and I'm just okay, like, okay, I'm just going to finish this and I'm never going to do this I'm again. Not, tomorrow I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be so good. I'm not going to have any sugar. I'm just going to have high protein, lots of avocado. <laughs> I'm on the wagon tomorrow. No more sugar. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Like after, after I gorge and even as I'm gorging, I'm just like, yes. Okay. Oh, this, this is so the last bad. bite. <laughs> I know, I know this is bad. Guilty. I know. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw this away and I will never do this again until I do it the next time. Right. And I'm laughing, but it's actually not funny because it's, it's yeah. addiction. Welcome to addiction. Yes. Sugar is addictive people. It can really get a hold on you. I was doing so good for like several months. Oh. And I'm not sure what happened, how I fell off the horse. I forget what it was. I, 
I don't remember what it was. What about you? Are you, how's your- Well, I just fell off that wagon big time yesterday and I'm starting to try to do a salt oil. You made ice cream for heaven's sakes. I did. (laughs) And then I consumed it really quickly. And I fasted until- I broke my fast with the ice cream that we made. Oh my God. And it was you so broke it good. Up. And as soon as I ate it, because it was, you know, we, we roasted the, the pecans in the butter. And then, we, you know, it was just, everything was wrong with it. And it was so delicious. And then I just kept going back and getting more. And I was like, okay, tomorrow. Because, you know, I've done like an intermittent fast. I've even done the one where I was vegan and low like a fasting mimicking diet for five days, you know, where you eat like wow. almost nothing. I've done it, but you know, it does help you cut down on cravings. But once I go into sugar, it's very, and nuts combined with sugar and nuts and that salty, mm-hmm. that's a hard, that's a hard sell for me. It's hard for me to say no to that. It's better for me to not start. Once I start, the day is almost finished. <laughs> like that's how it happens. There goes the day. So. It's addictive. There's no doubt. And I think about it and I obsess about it. And I know that there's ice cream in the refrigerator. Mm. Do you berate yourself? I'm better about not berating myself because that was a trap also, but I do a little bit. I just go, okay, tomorrow. That was a learning process to not berate myself too hard because that actually just makes me binge more. So I have to be- Really? Okay. So you feel guilty and because of your guilt, you eat more. Well, I used to. Yeah, it was all part of it. It was just all part. Well, I'm guilty anyway. Let me just eat. So there was a little bit more like that. So, you know. Wow. It's a process. It's a never ending process. But I feel like the intermittent fasting has helped me a lot. It's cut down on my cravings. But yeah. Really sugar. has it? Okay. Yeah. But once I start with like a big amount of sugar, then that's. Sugar, man. This is, it's real. It's real. It's the mother of all addictions, in my it opinion. It really is. Do you remember, was it in the 60s or was it in the 70s where the sugar industry paid research yes. scientists to say that it was it was the fat industry it was fat <laughs> that was causing all the heart disease yes and then we find out some 40 50 60 years later that it was the sugar all along it was the sugar how did they get away with that they pulled the wool on our eyes yes absolutely and now we're a nation of addicts with young absolutely. people 16 and 17 years old drinking venti whatevers and developing cancers for heaven's sakes you know so you got diabetes i well i can't even call it a spectrum you can't say diabetes on one end and cancer on the other it's it's all that all interrelated too it seems like you were saying about inflammation well because the inflammation touches every part of every system just of your body and you need your liver your liver is you know, it's the, it's the, it's the, what bails you out, gets rid of all the junk. And if you're loading it down with sugar, I mean, how's it supposed to do its, its job, right? I hope we've made the case here that sugar is not your friend. It's not your friend. You have to take it in very teeny, 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 teeny doses if you can. And don't use sugar substitutes. It's the same thing. I should have provided a list of all the different sugars. I remember a doctor saying that to me once. He goes, do you drink Diet Coke? And at the time I drank tons of Diet Coke. And he goes, it doesn't matter that it's, uh, he said that sugar substitute, it affects your body yeah. just the same. Don't, don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Because it's because your body reads it the same. Like people, I don't know what scientists are thinking when they do this, like, like it's going to trick your body somehow. The only thing your body's going to do is what is this? I don't know. Let's store this up as fat. Have an insulin response. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they just package it up and store it as fat because they don't know what to do with it. They, they, they don't know how to process it. Anything that ends with os is a sugar. So that's, oh. that's one rule. Okay. Okay. So okay. Sucralose, glucose, fructose. fructose. Now, okay. now the fruit, sugar from fruits is not it's not the same level of danger because it's mixed with water, it's mixed with fiber, it's mixed with a bunch of things. It doesn't hit your system the same. It's now, not the guy so from processed. The, it's not so processed. It's a different, your body processes it completely differently because you get a lot more things. It's not, it's not nutrient deficit, it's nutrient dense. Yeah. So it's, it's, 
But the guy from the four day work week, I forgot his name. He says don't have fruit, which I think it's, it's that's that's pretty, that's tough. I find that when I have a fruit smoothie, and when I say fruit smoothie, I don't add sugar. It's just, right. it's, just, the just the, it's just the fruit. Fiber in those fruits. Water yeah. and, and milk and, and some collagen supplements. That's why I'm so. <laughs> <That's been chewy. laughs> That's why I'm not like, you know, drinking that. But in any event, I find that when I have a smoothie that I don't crave. All right. You have satiety. Okay. I have satiety. And I do put apples in my veggie juice. Not all the time, but no, half the time. And it's very tasty. But again, it's not the same value proposition as added sugar. Added sugar. Processed. That's not processed. That's no, right. Non-processed sugar is what I'm talking about. Natural processes food. cookies, processes ice cream, processes cake, processes bread, process, you know, those things are, are, are processed. Hostess tasty cakes and that kind of stuff, that's processed. So I hope we've made the case today that <laughs> sugar ain't your friend. No, it's not. It's your friend. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, please subscribe below and become a part of our little community. We I know we're not the only ones out there that, that enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. And I hope that you guys are getting something from this. I, we certainly enjoy giving this to you and, and, and hope that it's beneficial. So please join us. Won't you subscribe? Uh, hit one of the, the buttons below or in the description and join us. And we hope to see you next time. My darling. Mwah. Thank you so much for talking with Next me today. Week. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.